Okay, I'm going to try. This is my first video on my sewing machine. I don't have good equipment. It's an old phone uh, that I don't use anymore. I just use it for the camera. So we're going to give this a try and I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel and um, I probably will not be um, editing it in any way. Uh, so you're going to have to bear with me. Hopefully if it goes well, I'll get better at it. <laughs> but this is to show how to put the yarn in the in the rope for making your rope baskets or rope bowls and this is the rope that I'm using well, I can't see it I don't want to move this camera because I may not get it back in position so <clears throat> maybe at the end I can show it better I'm not going to make this too long uh, it takes too long to upload on YouTube so let's give this a try and here we go. I'm just using a yarn. I have a lot of yarn. I do a lot of projects over the years for fiber arts, outsider art, that kind of thing. I don't like rules and regulations. I kind of wing things as best I can. So I'm using an old Kenmore sewing machine. It does straight and zigzag, but it's got a big motor. So that's why I like it. It go punches through the rope very well. So here we go. You just, let's see, how can I explain this? You just put your yarn in between your rope and <clears throat> zigzag around. If you got to use your widest zigzag, squish the rope in as you're sewing. It doesn't matter if it comes up or down because that's what gives it the marbled effect. You don't want it like all perfect in there. If you want to do it the way I do it. Everybody, some people like perfection. I do not. Um... I like randomness. I'm mostly an abstract artist type of person, collage. So I, I enjoy the randomness and I don't mind a few mistakes because I feel that handmade, it's not made by machine, so that's just the way it is. Anyway, I tend to talk a lot. Sorry. But this is all you do. Just put it in there. And you can use any kind of yarn. They all act a little differently. Some are more finicky than others. I haven't been doing this very, very long, so... But once you get the technique and you experiment around, you can see that it's really not that hard to do. So you just keep going until you get the size you want. Um, now, if you notice my inside here is a little bit messy. And what I'll do is I'll just... When I finish the base of this bowl, I'll probably make it six or seven inches. I'll just go back and zigzag over that a couple times. Or, or you can just cut it. Anything you don't like, you can just like cut right off. See? So many ways to do these things. There is no making mistakes at all. It's mostly practice. Working your machine. You know, that's, that's about it. And I'm trying to talk and think here at the same time, which I'm not very good at. So my hands look huge and old because I am old. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, Visual. I'm a visual person, so I enjoy doing my visuals. So um, be anxious to see how this. I'll take. You know what? I'll take this off in a second, and then you can see the other side while we're doing this. Just make it a little bit bigger. Okay. Unravel my yarn a little. See, I don't do any kind of uh, fancy nothing. Just stick it in there and. Push your rope up against it and sew away. Make sure your machine is cleaned and oiled and with a nice fresh needle because the rope does take a toll on your needles. But I can do quite a few bowls with just one needle. So should I stop here and show the other side? Like I said, once I get going, it's hard for me to stop. I'm, all, I'm like on a roll here. Okay, let's see. 
Let me just do a little back tack. There we are. And, ooh, my camera seems to, let me move the machine a little bit. How's that? How's that? Better? Okay. Um, it's very strange talking to yourself. So, just snip these off a little. Oh, yeah, I'm using any old thread I have. I have a lot of embroidery thread because I have an embroidery machine. I used to do that years ago, so I have a lot of that. So I've been using that on the on these rope bowls. Um, it's thinner, but uh, it works. You know, if I have cotton, I'll use cotton, just whatever I have. But you see how that's kind of messy there? But this is what the other side looks like. So you see, it just kind of, it's random. Just kind of comes through. No real thinking. Don't overthink this process. So I was stuck on my feed dogs a little there. So I can just mush these down with a little more. Random type of sewing. You could do this neater than I do if you prefer. But, you know, I have allergies. I'm sorry. I just I just made you guys dizzy or something, probably. So, see, you just push them down there. Or if you're really, really particular, you can start your... And go from the center, start your yarn and your... your uh, but that's kind of finicky for me. I like to do quick and no fuss. Just me. Okay. Uh, oh, I was going to show you some of the yarns. That's what I want to do. Hold on a sec. Let me see if I can get this little thing off. There we go. 